Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It's Princess Rennie here and I know it's been a while. Instead of just explaining all the stuff that's been going on over the past month since I've last posted a video, I will have a recap update video coming up for you guys very, very soon. And I promise it'll be very juicy, very interesting. I had a lot going on, but a lot of good things as well. That's not what this video was about though. I am actually going to be doing the Christian girl tag. And I, and I was tagged by none other than Miss Nikki Malight, Light Talks here on YouTube. She is a licensed clinical social worker and she specializes in mental and emotional health. But she's also a Christian, which is absolutely amazing. She's also one of my sisters in Christ and also one of my accountability partners. Wow, girl, we wear a lot of hats. But yes, don't forget to go ahead and check out her channel. I will link it below so you guys can check it out. So let's get right into this video. Um, if you made it this far, obviously you want to see what this video is about. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. But also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. When you subscribe, you get a notification for every time I post a new video. And now that I'm back officially, there will be a lot of videos coming out. So you don't want to miss it. And now we're gonna get right into it. There's some questions that I need to answer and it is a Christian girl tag. So let me get right into it. First question is, um, what is your testimony or what is your salvation story? Um, so for me, I grew up in church. So I share this with you guys a lot. Um, I used to, my mom used to send my brother and I to church like every single Sunday, whether or not she was there. Um, and then I remember like us going to like the children's church over across the street and then her going to the adults church. Um, and I also remember going to church with my grandmother uh, during like weekdays in the summertime, <laughs> like randomly just going to Catholic church with her. I went to Pentecostal churches. Um, I've been to Baptist church. I've been to like it all. But of course, my denomination currently is Pentecostal. Um, my Christian journey story, if you guys haven't seen part of it, uh, where I was basically spilling the tea on myself about living a double life, I'm going to go ahead and link that for you guys. I think it's over here. <laughs> Don't quote me, but yes, I think it's going to be over here. Just look for that I card and you'll be able to see it. In that video, I was able to talk to you guys about like my journey of like, going through the motions and pretending to be sold out for Christ, but I really wasn't. Uh, when I really and truly decided to give my heart to the Lord, um, it was even after I was already baptized. I baptized at the age of 11, and it was a decision that I made because I, at the time, did not have to do a peer pressure or anything like that. I was ready. I wanted to be the worship leader. I knew that I wanted to live for God. And I had a lot of bumps along the road, um, again, referring back to that video. My journey is like I've grown up in church. I've been to church with my grandma, Baptist, Pentecostal, you name it. I've been to like every kind of Christian church there is. Um, but when I really sold out for Christ was around, I want to say... 2016 that was a really rough year for me and I was so tired of going around in cycles and I noticed that there's times where I would be like okay I want to be sold out for God but then something comes up and like distracts me or turns me away from being fully focused and it's like a con constant thing where I just have to go back and like God, I just want to focus on just you. So 2016 was when I was like, okay, no more uh, negotiating or um, compromising when it comes to my faith. Like, I want to just be sold out for God. And I'm not saying the journey has been perfect from since then, but I knew and I made the conscious decision based on what I knew. Um, that there was trials and there are um, there is a such thing as the enemy that's trying to kill steal and to destroy that's trying to turn me from God and also knowing that it's not an easy road and still choosing that road uh, that was the year that I made that decision 2016 so um, definitely not perfect still learning still progressing but also made that decision in spite of it all Tell me about your relationship with the Lord. So this is a great question and it actually ties into uh, my salvation story. So my biggest thing with God, um, I think of it like I am the stubborn daughter 
that just needs to get it together. I think of that picture where it's like, God is trying to give you a giant teddy bear, like he's hiding that behind his back, but I'm holding on to this little teddy bear and I'm like, God, I want this one, this is the one I want. And God is like, nope, put it down, I have better for you. And honestly, like it has been a constant thing where it's like, God, I wanna trust you, I wanna trust you wholeheartedly, like show me a sign. But if he doesn't show me a sign, I'm like, okay, so what's going on here? Um, <laughs> this constant, like, God, like, why, why, why? Um, not questioning, like, his decisions, but questioning, like, what is the purpose of this? I always want to know, like, what am I supposed to learn from this? Like, why am I going through this? And what am I supposed to get from it? Um, and a lot of me trying to get back to the place where I'm trusting and depending on only him. And that, again, is not perfect. It's a constant journey. I think God is at a point where he's just like, this little one, you know? Um, but at the same time, like I know that his love is unconditional and he knows my heart. Um, I love the story of David and I feel like that is another, um, that goes into another question actually, because it's about um, what is your favorite book in the Bible, right? And my favorite book is the Psalms, Psalms of David. Everyone knows the story of David. Of course, he slayed Goliath. But even into adulthood, David has done so much that God probably was just like, what is wrong with you? But he was still named a man after God's own heart. And I'm not saying I'm on David's level where I cried out, cry out to God every single moment. There's times where I'm just like, God, I don't even think you want to talk to me right now. Like, you just saw what I did. You just saw what I said. Like... I don't think you want to talk to me right now, but also keeping in mind that if David, with all the sins that he's committed um, and turning away from God and everything that he's done, um, I don't mean to laugh, but like everything that he's done, um, still being able to turn back to God and being like, forgive me, like I know I messed up, like, and still being able to praise God in adversity. I want to get to that place, and I feel like that's my constant journey where it's just like I need to trust God and I need to trust him wholeheartedly with everything that I'm going through but also letting go and let God and trust that he's gonna forgive me but he's also leading me and I'm gonna learn lessons from the decisions that I choose to make you know so he's merciful but he's also a just God so that's kind of like our relationship like God I love you I know I messed up but you know, I'm going to do better, but also understanding that you can't do better without just without God on your side. So still a work in progress, still trying to get there, and we're going to get there. We're doing it together, and that's what matters. What have you been praying about lately? So this is another reason as to why I haven't been posting videos a lot. Something I've been praying about a lot is uh, forgiveness, like being able to forgive others, but also receiving and forgiving myself so um that's gonna be one of my videos i'm christian but i don't know how to forgive and um just being able to talk through that i feel like i can't do that until i get to the place where god has revealed to me some gems on like how i can accept forgiveness like that's my biggest thing like forgiving myself and accepting forgiveness from others and also being able to truly forgive um others as well so that's something I've been praying about a lot, a lot lately. And there's things that he's like revealed to me that I didn't even know, like I was holding against myself, like things I haven't forgiven myself fully for, I'm still holding on to. So definitely that's like my work in progress and that's still something that I'm praying about even right now. My favorite hymn, is it really a hymn? Um, it's, the Lord is my shepherd. So Psalms 23, basically, he goes before me, and behind me, I won't fear. Yeah, that song. But also another hymn that I really, really love is, I don't know if this is a hymn, right? But <laughs> this is a song that I really love, really enjoy. It is, I Can Only Imagine. Is that a hymn or is that just a song? Does that count? I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. And then it goes into surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? The reason I love this song so much is because I think of the moment that I meet face to face 
with my Lord and Savior in heaven. And I'm like in awe of his presence and of his glory, like seeing him face to face. And like, I don't know what I would do. Like I'll probably be stunned. <laughs> like, I don't know if I would have the strength. My spirit would have the strength to stand up and worship and like dance for him but I'll probably be on my knees, like worshiping, crying out to him and thanking him for finally <laughs> receiving me, you know, from this stressful earth. Um, but I'm not in a hurry for that either, but I could just imagine what that would, what that experience would be like, that amazing experience when you're face to face with your creator. Yeah, so that's another song that I love. What are some practical ways we can love others? And this is another video that I'm also going to link above here. I'm Christian, but I don't know how to love. There's a part one and a part two, so definitely check out both. But that was something that I prayed about in 2016 because, um, of course, I knew how to love, but like not in the Christian sense where it's like that unconditional agape love that God gives and shows us. So I feel like the way that we can truly and authentically love others is by obviously being genuine. So not like forcing your love on someone, but also trying to get to know people, get to know their love language, and then loving them in that way. So for some people, uh, a physical touch might be like a hug, you know, um, a pat on the shoulder, things like that might be like their love language. Whereas for others, it's words of affirmation. So like, you're great, you're amazing, you can do anything you put your mind to. I love that you did X, Y, and Z, and I'm so proud of you. Like those kind of things might be for someone who um, whose love language is words of affirmation. So definitely recommend that book, by the way. Uh, so the book by Gary Chapman, make sure you check out that book, The Five Love Languages. You'll get to learn what those love languages are, how to identify them, or even how to uh, emulate those kind of love languages. But just make sure that you are genuine, that you are caring, that you're thoughtful, that you're not just thinking about yourself and being selfish, not thinking of like, oh, if I give out this, kind of gesture that I'm going to get something in return. Like loving authentically and genuinely not expecting anything in return is the most um, practical way that we can actually love others. My denomination is Pentecostal, but I should say that I'm non-denominational because at the end of the day, we're all Christians and um, I just have a preference for Pentecostal church because we're known as the party church and y'all know me, I love to party, but obviously for Jesus. So like, I just love that I can come together and dance and praise and just go in for God. Like I love that now that like partying lifestyle is shifted and it's not for the world, but I can dance for my Lord, obviously in a appropriate manner if that makes sense. Like I love music and I love dancing. And if I can do that just for God and it be okay versus being in the world and being like, you know, not, not saved, I would take this any day, any day. My favorite Christian brand as a blah, 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 Christian brand, brand, band. <laughs> like, what am I saying? My favorite Christian band as of right now is Maverick City Music. Oh my gosh. Um, there's just the whole album. Okay. It's just like, I've been having it on repeat every morning when I go to, um, work out. Like that's, that's just amazing. I was baptized at the age of 11. I think I mentioned that already. Um, so yeah, I've been baptized and I think that was the last time I've been baptized. I thought of going back and doing it again, but, um, I think it's counterintuitive only because like for me, I know that once you're born again, it's not that you're automatically out of the water and you're perfect. Like you, <laughs> you come out and you're like, this is a decision that I made. I've crossed over. There's still going to be challenges along the way, but I still need to continue this process. If I do choose to be baptized again, I would have to be led and feel like, uh, you know, convicted that I need to go and baptize again, but I haven't had that conviction. So yeah, I haven't been baptized since I was 11. What is your favorite Christian book besides the Bible? So, I have a few books here, as you guys can see. Um, I started off reading this book, which is Disciplines of a Godly Woman by Barbara Hughes. 
Um, I know her husband also did. Was it her husband? I believe so. Yeah, her husband did it where he made disciplines of a godly young man and disciplines of a godly man. Um, so this book, oh my gosh. I'm not going to lie, I haven't finished it. I've had it for years, and as you can kind of tell, I would start reading the book, and then it convicts me, and I'm like, okay, i got to go pray about this for like a month or something, because like it's just that deep. And it talks about like the different disciplines as you're growing up into a young woman. So like um, some of them discipline of worship, discipline of prayer, uh, discipline of your singleness, discipline of submission, uh, discipline of gospel, for godliness, things like that. So she's just talking about the things that we have to let go of, things that we have to train ourselves for constantly, not just like one day you're done, um, but things that we just need to be intentional and purposeful with. Um, but like I said, <laughs> I haven't finished it because there's just so many gems in here. I actually think I'm going to start over the book and actually finish it by the end of the year. Obviously I'm going to finish it before that, but this is my goal because I finished multiple books so far this year. So I can definitely start this over and definitely finish it. Not bad. It has 215 pages. It's not horrible because I've read books bigger than that. I'm always reading so that's one book um my next book is emotionally healthy spirituality by pete peter scazzaro i'm so used to call him pete but peter scazzaro he's actually one of the founding uh pastors for the rock church here in queens new york where i live and um he just talks about so much in this book he talks about um basically similar to what my um accountability partner talks about on her channel um and she's actually the one that rec ugh, she's actually the one that recommended this book he talks about like being emotionally healthy as a christian so there's times where we talk about oh christians shouldn't feel like this or they shouldn't feel like that or like you're perfectly fine cuz you know you have god on your side but then there's some times where you just feel sad or you feel heartbroken or you feel embarrassed or whatever it is that you might be feeling and he kind of like talks through those feelings and those emotions and why it's important to work through them instead of trying to sugarcoat it with spirituality oh my god i just explained that perfectly <laughs> so yeah that's basically what it is and it says it's impossible to be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature so it's amazing and this is a book so like obviously this is the tip of the iceberg Let's focus here. The tip of the iceberg that's like what you show people and then all this emotion that you're dealing with. Yeah. Don't let that be you. So I love this book for that reason because it highlights so many important things that as Christians we need to take note of. And then this other book that I received from my pastor um, is called Jesus Calling, 50 Devotions for Encouragement. And I love, love, love that this is not dated so I can read it over and over and over and over again. Um, but it's definitely like a lot of encouraging words and stuff, a lot of encouraging scriptures, um, different passages, different things that you can just go back and reread from Sarah Young. Um, but yeah, I know she has many different versions of this. There's some that is like um, a monthly or a yearly um, devotion, but this one is undated and has all these encouragements. So yeah, those are my three favorite books as of right now. I've read other books this year. I've actually read more books this year than I have in a while. So um, definitely have some progress. What are you passionate about? So um, I personally believe that God turns your passions into purpose or your passions lead you to purpose. So like there's things that God like revealed to me and I'm still learning what my purpose is as I continue down the path but I am definitely passionate about youth and it's so funny looking back because never in a million years would I think I'd be a teacher um I did always think I'd be a Sunday school teacher like that was something that I always wanted to do um so yes Sunday school teacher but I'm also a school teacher I'm always like having discussions and conversations with youth I have a YouTube channel where I'm talking to people my age and younger because I've been there done that um and I that's just something I'm really passionate about I love sharing my story and ensuring that I, um, whoever I meet and whoever I encounter is 
getting a bit of like lessons and encouragement, but not in a way that it's like being thrown at them. It's like a genuine conversation. And that's actually how I minister to people. Like we would be having a genuine conversation about whatever. And again, I've been there, done that. So like there's a lot of things that people might say that they might be surprised that I've like experienced or seen or done or whatever. So um, it's funny sometimes having those kind of conversations, but also it's like, yeah, I was there, but like this is how I got through it. And, um, you know, I'm better now. You know, I'm, I've grown from that, basically. Not better, but I've grown from that. And um, this is just what I've gone through. So when it comes to like meeting other people, meeting youth in general, like I'm not too shy to go and just start talking like, hey, you're talking about Fortnite, you're talking about whatever, whatever. And then some way, somehow, some, whatever you want to say, right? Um, the conversation just turns and I talk about the passions I have for Christ. Or like, we just talk about church. Do you go to church? Like, what's your relationship with your parents? Like, just random conversations. And some way, somehow, that conversation comes up with Christ. I remember being in Uber rides, legit, just like minding my business. And the Uber driver just randomly asked me like, so, <laughs> what makes you so happy? Or like, so, <laughs> what are you doing today? Oh, I'm heading to church. Oh my gosh, yes. And then it's just like a whole conversation about my faith, why I'm a Christian, all that stuff. And I feel like where I'm at right now and the things that I've experienced in my past um, allow me to talk about um, just how good and amazing God is, just how forgiving he is and merciful he is, but also how just he is, right? Um, I feel like everything that I've experienced in life um, all encompassed together make me the person that is, I guess you could say, qualified for this. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely passionate about the youth and I definitely want to continue to encourage others that there is hope, there will always be hope. Um, <laughs> whether you believe it or not, there is hope and you will get through it no matter what. So with that being said, I have two friends that I wanna tag um, here on YouTube to do the Christian Girl Tag. The first is Christiana Faith. Um, so she is one of my friends and also another kind of a lead partner. We actually met a few years back and we hit it off in an instant and we've been friends ever since. So that's my my sister in Christ, Christiana Faith. Christiana Faith, go ahead and do the tag, girl, because you're it. And then the other friend that I want to tag is my South African sister here on YouTube. We actually met on YouTube, but I absolutely love her videos, love her channel. Um, just love what she talks about. For my South African sister, Sanja Lusati, I hope I'm saying your last name right. Um, if not, I'm sorry, girl. If not, I'm sorry, but... Go ahead, Cindy, girl. You're it. <laughs> okay, I'm really weird with this. But yes, thank you again for Light Talks, for tagging me uh, for the Christian Girl tag. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions about my faith or about my passions or about my journey, definitely go ahead and link them down below. Comment them down below. And I'll try to make sure I answer all of them. If not, in the comments, definitely in another video. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button so that you're always notified whenever I post a new video. And I will see you on the next one. Be blessed, spread love, and stay beautiful inside and out. Bye, guys. It feels so good to be back. It's been so long. Oh my gosh. <laughs>